Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about Mars colonization and more specifically terraforming. We're going to talk about the science and chemistry of this very very difficult task and we're going to see if it's even possible from the perspective of technology that we currently have today. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So you may actually remember um, a few years ago, Elon Musk suggested that in order for us to actually release large amounts of atmosphere right here on Mars, we may actually consider uh, sending a few nukes to the north and the south pole of the planet and essentially release large amounts of CO2 that are stored there. In other words, trying to release CO2 from here and from here. There's actually quite a lot of deposits there that could potentially start terraforming the planet. Now. On one hand, it's a crazy idea, but on the other, it's not actually as crazy as it sounds, at least the releasing CO2 part. Nukes, maybe not such a good idea. There's actually a very interesting technique that has been developed back in the 80s um, in some of the scientific literature that involves um, sending something else on Mars. And today we're going to talk about this very cool, very unusual, and very interesting gas that we have on our planet today that may in the future become like a must go for colonization and terraforming. Today we're going to be talking about sulfur hexafluoride. Now in order for us to even start terraforming this beautiful object, we first need to introduce magnetosphere. We're going to imagine that we kind of found a way to do this, and so we now need to find a way to actually create atmosphere here. And um, if we were to actually look at the atmospheric pressure here, it's actually um, more than a hundred times less than it is on the planet Earth. The actual atmosphere right now, for the most part, contains CO2 with some other minor gases still there. And one of the reasons CO2 is still on Mars and other gases are not is because of the molecular mass. CO2 is actually a pretty heavy gas and so it's a little bit more difficult for CO2 to escape Mars um, when it's bombarded by the solar radiation and, and other um, solar rays. And um, overall, it's actually relatively easy to maintain CO2, but not so easy to maintain other gases, like for example, nitrogen, which we have a lot of on our planet, but there's practically none here on Mars anymore, even though there might have been a lot previously. So for example, if you look at the composition of air on Earth, uh, about 78% of air is just nitrogen, with about 21% of oxygen and only about 0.4% uh, being CO2. So the most important uh, two gases are actually here. And having too much oxygen is actually pretty dangerous because um, oxygen can become very toxic at relatively low pressures. In other words, we need to find the replacement for nitrogen and something that can survive here on Mars, even if it's bombarded by the sun. So something that's kind of as heavy or even heavier than CO2. And also this gas has to be relatively same in terms of properties. It has to be non-toxic, we should be able to breathe it without any consequences. And at the same time, you want this gas to be non-reactive because you don't want it to suddenly react with every single rock on the planet and essentially disappear into the actual ground. So is there such a gas? And of course there is. And it's been around since about uh, early 50s when the US started to produce a lot of electrical tools. And this gas is absolutely amazing as an electric insulator, which is actually what it's used for today. This gas is... Sulfur hexafluoride, um, also known as ELA gas, and this is what the molecule itself looks like. It's relatively simple. It does have a scary name and it kind of looks scary as if it's probably dangerous to us, but it turns out it is not just safe, it's absolutely safe. And uh, you can actually look this up uh, on YouTube. There's quite a lot of videos where people even breathe it in as a kind of a scientific demonstration because it has a practically um, opposite effect of helium. It makes your voice sound very, very deep, almost like Darth Vader. Without going into too much chemistry related to this gas, it is actually one of the coolest elements uh, that we currently have and use, although it's not really used uh, that much. It is used in manufacturing and uh, specifically electrical tools, um, although ironically, it's also been used in some of the Nike shoes to actually create the cushion on the bottom, so you can totally find some of this gas inside of those cushions. 
It's also used by the US Navy in some of its um, Mark 50 torpedoes, um, and it's actually responsible for the propulsion in those torpedoes. But for the most part, it's actually not really that widely used, and as a matter of fact, in the last few years we started to control it more because we found out that it's also the most potent greenhouse gas out there. It's about 22,000 times more potent than CO2. In other words, you need 22,000 times less of this gas to produce just as much greenhouse effect as CO2. And that in itself already makes it a very valuable gas for essentially terraforming. But really, the coolest feature of this gas, except for the fact that it's totally safe and non-toxic, uh, is that it has a very high density and very high molecular mass. It has six times more density than air, so you need six times less of this gas by volume to create just as much um, atmospheric pressure. And also, its molecular mass is actually one of the highest for any of the gases, meaning that it would be very difficult for this gas to escape into the uh, outer space if you were to put it into the atmosphere of Earth or Mars. As a matter of fact, it would even survive on the moon that has very low gravity. So in other words, you could actually place quite a lot of this gas in the Martian atmosphere and it would very likely stay here relatively long. It's a uh, Average lifetime is about 3,000 years, just over 3,000, um, and you need to eventually replenish it, so it's not really a permanent solution, but nevertheless, um, it actually would be enough to kickstart the actual uh, terraforming process. Now, unfortunately, if we were to basically just use only this gas to create enough atmospheric pressure on Mars to kind of simulate Earth atmospheric pressure, we would not have enough um, either sulfur or fluoride on our planet or even planet Mars uh, to create just enough gas. But you don't need to actually create the entire atmosphere out of this. As a matter of fact, it's not really recommended because if your air contains more than 9% by mass of this gas, it does kind of become dangerous for humans because it actually has a tendency to replace oxygen molecules and can technically suffocate you. So you do need to have oxygen in there as well. But if we were to raise the pressure, the surface pressure um, of Mars by just three more microbar using just enough of these uh, sulfur hexafluoride compounds, we would actually create conditions necessary for the Martian poles to start uh, sublimating and releasing even more CO2 into the atmosphere, thus increasing this pressure even higher. So this would be a really good start to that terraforming process. And on top of that, these gases, specifically um, sulfur hexafluoride, would be actually um, responsible for increasing the temperature to more Earth-like. It would be around 10 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees Celsius on average here. Um, so you would not really need any more greenhouse effect and you could totally focus on introducing other gases. So this would be a really good start for the terraforming process. Now, could we potentially do this? Is there actually enough gas that we can produce and enough ways for us to actually do it? Well, back in the 80s, um, they actually had this idea of sending a barrage of rockets, like basically constant rockets going to Mars and just kind of colliding with Mars and bringing these pressurized cylinders of um, sulfur hexafluoride. And they actually calculated in about a decade of these barrages, you could actually increase uh, this to about 10 microbar and this would be enough to sublimate the rest of CO2 and increase this even further. And so basically um, with current productions of uh, the sulfur hexafluoride and actually other um, compounds like CFCs which are actually banned here on earth but are very potent in um, the greenhouse effect, we could potentially send all of the stuff that is now technically illegal on earth to Mars and even establish factories producing more of these compounds here, thus increasing the actual uh, terraformability of the planet, increasing its temperature dramatically. And because um, sulfur hexafluoride is actually not responsible for depleting the ozone layer, it's totally absolutely safe. Okay, it's not absolutely safe. Like I said, you can actually suffocate if you breathe too much. Um, also, it does have a slight tendency to give you a bit of a buzz. It's actually what's known as um, anesthesiac, kind of similar to the laughing gas, but not very strong one. But we do need to actually try uh, studying this gas more uh, thoroughly to understand what it can do to human body, because if this is actually a viable solution to us, we could then use 
sulfur hexafluoride compounds on other objects farther away from the sun to essentially terraform them as well because of its potency as a greenhouse gas. So I guess in the ultimate terraform world, you would want to have maybe about 8-7% of this particular gas um, responsible for giving you a lot of air pressure, but also quite a lot of greenhouse gas. And the other elements would be oxygen and possibly some other compounds that we may not even have invented yet to essentially uh, raise the air pressure to livable conditions. And uh, what's interesting is that because this gas is relatively good at not mixing with water, and also because it is a gas after all, it can actually mix with other gases and create an actual atmosphere where you don't really lose oxygen anymore and you don't have to worry about other gases. Now obviously you would still need a magnetosphere, but that's another story for another day, and we we'll actually talked about this previously. So all in all, uh, this unusual gas that is technically not really widely used just yet, could definitely become the future of space exploration and most importantly terraforming of other worlds. We could maybe use this on other planets and even create this on Mars and transfer it to other planets because Mars has one of the most active uh, sulfur cycles. There's a lot of sulfur here and also one of the most uh, interesting deposits of fluoride, possibly even more than on planet Earth. We've discovered quite a lot of fluoride here on the Martian surface. And so this is definitely something we need to look into and analyze for future of our species and also for future of space exploration. Now, unfortunately, today's annual production of this gas is only about 10 kiloton per year, which is about maybe 4,000 times less than we need to help Mars get to where it needs to be. But if we actually put our efforts into it and create uh, new factories um, and essentially rockets to transfer this gas, we could maybe turn this planet more habitable in about 20 years or so. Well, that's all I wanted to do in this video, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about Mars and about how maybe one day we could potentially terraform this beautiful planet, making it look a lot more Earth-like than it does today. There's definitely already technology for us to start, and there's definitely enough both chemical and physical understanding of how terraforming works that we just need to try and start doing it. And hopefully maybe it will be even you watching this video. Anyway, let's see where this goes in the next 20 years or so. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.